Hi everybody, my name is Stacy, and this is my second how-to video. This video is going to show you um, how to make sofrito. I will explain what sofrito is. Um, sofrito is a base that's used in Caribbean cooking. It's used in some Italian cooking. It's definitely used in Spanish cooking and um, people in Spain use sofrito. They use the term sofrito. Um, it's different from country to country being that everyone adds their own little kick to it. In Jamaica, if you break down the basis of jerk, it's nothing more than spicy sofrito. Um, what you do with sofrito is that you add it to rice dishes and you add it to stews and braises and it gives you that extra oomph. I, I really don't know how else to explain it. What I do know is that it's delicious and without it there really is no comida criolla. Comida criolla is Creole cooking for uh, heavy Spanish based cooking, not so much French, not so much um, Louisiana or Haitian Creole, um, more Spanish like Cuba and Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, um, even Jamaica, like I said, uh, Jamaicans add scotch bonnets or Mexican hot peppers to this along with some other um, woody spices that we all, know, we all know and they call it jerk and it's delicious. Um, for sofrito, Puerto Rican style, peppers, green peppers, red peppers, chopped up, garlic, lots of it, onions. I like to use both yellow onions and red onions. Um, red onions are a little bit sweeter to me. I, I like that in my sofrito. We also have fresh thyme that I will peel off of its um, stem. We have, of course, no sofrito will be sofrito without Caribbean herbs. Um, there's a lot of Asian cooking going on now. It's, uh, Asian flair is in. Um, there isn't a food truck or a restaurant or a mail order food company that does not have something Asian, um, which is great because Asian cooking is really good. Um, I'm saying that because if you cannot find these herbs that I'm going to point out to you uh, in your Latin market, if you don't have a Latin market, you definitely have an Asian market and you will find it there. They are culantro. Culantro has many different terms. And when I say many, I mean many different terms. And you have cilantro, or what um, Europeans and, and British like to call coriander. Um, culantro's flavor is much like uh, coriander seed. It's more potent. If you're not a fan of culantro, um, culantro cilantro, I, I suggest you uh, split this in half by adding some parsley. Um, I know that people who don't like uh, cilantro too much like to cut their uh, whatever they're making with cilantro in half by using mint. I don't suggest that you use mint in this. It's not the right flavor profile for Caribbean cooking. It's safer if you just go with flat leaf Italian parsley. Ajicitos. Back to ajicitos. Ajicitos, sweet chiles is um, what they are. In the Caribbean we call them ajicitos and we mean small pepper because we call green peppers ají. Ajicito, ají. Um, it really, it's calling it small, um, small pepper does not do it justice. It is not a small green pepper. It is a sweet chili. And if you are allergic to capsaicin, just because this is not hot, doesn't mean that when you go cracking it open, and um, you should crack it open to um, rinse and clean it out, you won't have a little bit of a tingle. It's not hot on the tongue, but if you are um, susceptible to tingling when you handle jalapenos, 
after handling a lot of these, and they do require a lot, the sofrito requires a lot, you'll start to get a little tingle around your nail bed, um, and don't scratch your eye. It's nowhere near as bad as jalapeno, but it'll, it'll bother you nonetheless. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to wash off all of the cilantro and this culantro. I'm going to crack open all of our ajicitos, sweet chilies. I'm going to rinse them out. I am going to rinse out half the seeds and I'm going to keep the um, seeds in the other half of the ajicitos. I like the, the flavor profile that comes from the seeds when they get ground up in my um, food processor for my sofrito. Give me a moment and be right back. Hi guys, so this is the second part of the sofrito. I started to to ground it up, mince, um, mill it in my food processor, and all it is is you take your you take your peppers and onions and ajicitos and you put them into your food processor and just give it a few pulses and that's it. Um, with modern conveniences, obviously people start to do things differently in the old days and honestly purist. Uh, sometimes I'm in a, in, a, in a mood to be pure, sometimes I'm not. We'll still do all of this by hand, dice up onions, peppers, garlic, and saute them in a, in a um, little bit of oil, uh, add uh, sprigs of cilantro, uh, there's no need to um, chop the cilantro. The reason that um, they added in whole sprigs is because as cilantro cooks, we all know that it discolors and they remove it once it gets all the flavor out of it. Um, once people got modern conveniences, of course there was the blender, the trusty blender. The blender would make it more of a, a paste and a, a liquid. And there's a lot of people today that still prefer their sofrito that way. I don't prefer my sofrito that way. I want my sofrito to have substance. The reason I want my sofrito to have substance is because I'm going to fry it. That's what sofrito means. Sofrito means to saute, to fry lightly. Um, so you don't want this to be too thin and you don't want it to, to, to thin or, or too finely minced where you can't control it and it burns on you. Remember this garlic in here and if garlic burns, it becomes bitter. Alright, so I'm going to continue pulsing this. A few pulses to get the cilantro down to the bottom. And once the cilantro goes down to the bottom, I pull it out. I don't, um, like I said, I'm not heavy handed on the blending. I prefer my chunky. See how um, I scrape the edge of the bowl? That's fine for me. If you want everything um, more homogenized, of course, scrape the bottom of the bowl. I am showing you how I do it. Now, when I mix it all up like this, I can gauge my texture and I go, okay, it didn't blend that batch well enough. And I'll go in and I'll, um, the next batch into the food process will be more finely milled. It's like, like a, 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 a wine. Um, I don't even know the term of those people since I don't drink those people who mix wines and, 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 and rums to get the best uh, flavor profile. <laughs> That's me with my sofrito. and then pulse it so the sofrito is dragged to the bottom by the force of the plates. Sometimes it needs help, I need new plates. I know that's what the problem is. Now, I'm 
going to mill up the rest of that cilantro with some olive oil so I don't burn my motor out because I want to mill that, like I mentioned before, separately, just because I, that's the way I like to do it. You don't have to, you can do like I was doing the past two batches, which was to add some cilantro on top or on the bottom of the rest of your vegetables. Whatever floats your boat, basically. Just get it all milled up. Okay guys, so we finished processing our sofrito and now I'm just gonna show you how I store them. As you see, they're already um, in containers that I purchased, um, those reusable um, take along. So once you have them in your containers, um, you wanna make sure that your containers are really clean. I always buy brand new containers and then I, I get them home and I wash them with really, really hot soapy water and I give them a rinse and, and dry them really well. You can go the extra step and rinse them with pure vinegar. Okay, so they all partitioned out, right? And you take the olive oil or whatever oil you choose to use. I'm using regular olive oil. Um, just give it a drizzle over top, like so. That's it, really. Um, not too much, just enough to coat the top. This is gonna help it um, stay airtight while it's in the freezer. Like I mentioned before, sofrito keeps almost indefinitely. So long as you don't have um, fluctuations in temperature in your freezer and everything stays um, frozen without defrosting and then freezing again. I know some people have that problem where their freezers like to defrost and their ice creams get ruined and, and stuff. Well, you don't want that to happen to sofrito. Don't see your sofrito um, defrost and freezes again. It tends to absorb those freezer burn um, flavors. Now, I took a piece of um, saran wrap, plastic wrap, cellophane paper, wherever you're from, whatever you call it, you know what it is, I'm showing you what it is. You press it down, trying to press all the air out from the top, and then you just come in like so and fold the overhang in, inward. Sufrito is pretty versatile. You can take a spoonful of this stuff, preferably when it's um, relatively fresh. And when I mean relatively fresh, I mean um, you haven't had it in the refrigerator more than um, a couple days. And you can turn this into an awesome chimichurri by just adding more olive oil until you get it to the right consistency. Grill up your favorite steak. I'm a ribeye girl, ribeye all the way. Um, and you know, slice and pour some of that over it. It is awesome. Also, I mentioned before that Jamaicans, um, the base of jerk in, in Jamaican cookery is sofrito. Um, some might argue that that's not true. It is true. Uh, where I added um, yellow onions, Jamaicans, so some Jamaicans um, might add scallions instead. Um, I can always uh, take this right here and turn it into jerk by easily um, grinding up some allspice, cinnamon, nutmeg, the, the spices I just mentioned, mixing it in, adding a scotch bonnet, or I'm going to make a hot pepper. And the secret is sugar, people. And um, authentic jerk would have, um, instead of sugar in it, or molasses, um, if you read some of the um, labels on those already prepared jerk mixes, they have a lot of molasses and, and stuff in it. Um, authentic jerk will always have Appleton rum. Appleton rum, is extremely sweet, especially the white one, uh, which makes it great for things like jerk and rum cake. Um, I don't, I don't drink, so there's no need for me to um, spend anything, any money on Appleton rum unless I'm making rum cake. Um, I'm partial to Bacardi Select. That is my favorite because that is my go-to when I need to add brandy to a, a dish, and I don't have any. It's a decent substitute, so that's what I keep on hand. So if it, if it was me making a jerk, I'd take this and all the spices and add on some uh, Bacardi Select rum, dark rum. If you don't like rum whatsoever and you wanted to make jerk, take this base again, add the spices, add the brown sugar, uh, the dark brown sugar preferably, or you can add a little bit of molasses. I don't suggest you add the molasses, you might go too far. Uh, the brown sugar is better. Okay, that's going to be it. And then
then I'll just go ahead, whoops, don't want that to happen, just go ahead and close them up and stack them up and put them in the freezer. Bye-bye.